Hey guys, Brian Beeler here with Storage Review in the main lab. And we're excited today to bring you something that many of you have been asking us for over and over and over again. So last year we did a little work around a uh, free NAS solution in a portable server designed for rugged use cases and that got some great response. I think in that review we had something like 60 screen caps of uh, the free NAS interface and our configuration and setup and that wasn't good enough for some of you. So we've got something else going on we've been working with ix systems on for a little while now uh, that we've got and as you can see we've got the box in here now i've cheated ahead and uh, and taken a look at what they've configured for us we've got a 2u free nas certified box now this is their 2u server regular rack mount server uh, according to this we are configured with a dozen hard drives and we've got the accelerator pack, which includes a, uh, a 960 gig SSD for reads and then a, a 240 gig for write cache. Now, there are some things you can do there uh, with ZFS native. They've got some pretty creative ways that we can leverage those two SSDs uh, in addition to system DRAM and, and the, the disks installed already. We've got 10 gig on board. We've got all sorts of uh, other goodies ready to go. One other note, we're actually working with the Segra as well. So if you've been keeping up with what's going on in the FreeNAS community, a Segra released some time ago a plugin that you just go through the interface, uh, plugins, install it, and you can get free coverage for 10 devices. And that can be things from phones to laptops to VM servers. So a Segra is doing a great thing for the FreeNAS community already by providing that uh, service for free. So we're going to take a look at that plugin as well, do a deep dive there, look at all the options and flexibility available from Asegra too. So we've got a lot of content planned. Let's just get right to it though. The box is sitting on the floor. We've got our handy box opener ready to go. So let's get this guy going. The only downside with hard drive systems is that they're a little bit more difficult from a one-man show to get unboxed and up onto this table for a deeper view. So I'm going to bring in Kevin here in just a second to help out with that. We've got rail kit, box of goodies. And actually, this is kind of nice. Uh, this is... This is silly that I get wrapped up in this thing, but for all the things that we unbox, a single foam piece on top is really nice for a number of reasons. First of all, security works out well. Second of all, it's a lot easier for one person to just lift this up and move it. But more from a lab management standpoint, you'd be surprised at how many boxes we put back together to return after six or eight months of playing around with them, only to realize that we're missing foam parts or sometimes have extra foam parts and the uh, Jenga action that has to happen to get stuff boxed back up when it leaves here is uh, sometimes requires some creativity. That's a little too much inside baseball for most of you, I'm sure, but anyway. All right, now we're down to the server. I'm gonna have Kevin come over and get half of this thing and we'll uh, make some room and get it up onto the table here. Let's move these, move our opener. Give this a yank. Eh, it's not so bad for 12 hard drives. All right, we'll clean up a little bit, get the bag off and come in closer to see what we've got on the hardware. All right, we've pulled the server out, gotten it uh, situated and zoomed in here on the front. Let's go ahead and start with the contents of the, the box just to see if there's anything good in here. Uh, we've got a setup guide, which is useful maybe. Ah, it's very useful because it's got uh, credentials for IPMI and the uh, system itself, which is good. It's got labeling of the drives. That's a, a bigger chassis than we have, but that's okay. That probably still starts at, uh, yep, zero to, uh, to 11 over here. Uh, yeah, this is always useful because it tells you how to log into things that, uh, that Kevin won't read this though. And then he'll email IX and they'll say, didn't you look at the guide? And he'll say, what guide? We didn't get a guide. And then I'll say, 
We got a guide, it's right here. This is the circle of life that goes on in the storage view lab. Uh, we've got also a, a welcome letter that has information on libraries and how to get to the uh, FreeNAS community. So those are all good things. They've actually included uh, some one meter cables too. We've uh, worked with FS cables quite a bit. These are little shorties, which is actually comes in really handy sometimes. We often have piles of uh, much longer cables that end up getting in the way. And then a series of, uh, of power cables, depending on how you want to connect up to your PDUs in the back, which we will do shortly after this video. So looking at the chassis itself, we know it's a 2U uh, Supermicro chassis. I could actually tell as soon as I saw the rails, but uh, anyone that's worked around these guys for a while recognizes the, uh, the carriers and the little power button on the side. We've got all bays are populated with uh, HGST two terabyte drives. So quality uh, drive skew, two terabytes times 12, that'll give us 24 terabytes of raw space. So that's pretty cool. Um, really, we're kind of about done here on the front. Let's go ahead and swing around to the back side and, and see how they've outfitted that for connectivity. Sliding around to the back, we can see, um, well, of course, on this side, we've got the, the 10 gig connectivity card. Uh, so that'll let us get some nice I.O. in and out of the box, which is always part of the trick with any of these things. Uh, we've got the whole console here of USB, uh, IPM, uh, management, monitor, serial, all that kind of stuff. Sliding around, we've got these two two and a half inch drives in the back. So at the very beginning, I talked a little bit about having the acceleration package on this for my X. So we'll have one SM. 863 from Samsung, 240 gig. This is going to be involved in the right side. And then another Samsung 883 DCT, uh, 960 gig that'll be involved in the read caching side. So again, we'll dive in a lot more there. There's a ton available in ZFS and a number of different options. Uh, as we get into the review and the capabilities aspects uh, via content review and uh, video we'll, we'll talk more about that and then lastly let's just yank one of these power supplies and see what we've got we've got a long one this is a uh, 920 watt power supply so we've got dual power supplies so overall it's exactly what you would expect out of this box it's nice to see uh, IX systems shipping with the HGST drives in the front and the Samsung drives in the back They've selected drives that are well suited for these tasks and uh, picking good quality components, not trying to uh, put a, an end user or client product in, which we see sometimes with the SSDs. Anytime the SSDs are gonna be in a scenario with caching or tiering where they're gonna get worked over pretty well, uh, you definitely wanna have a, a higher end product in there. So let's go ahead and, and take the lid off and we'll come in on above and just see what we've got going on from a, a motherboard and circuitry standpoint and uh, finish off this video with a nice look inside. All right, so let's take a look at what's inside here. I've already cheated a little bit. Supermicro has these two screws that go in the sides to help secure the lid. So I've removed those already. For as much as you guys like our longer videos, unscrewing two screws, we can probably skip that. So let's go ahead and remove the top panel and see what we've got going on inside. So we've got, uh, I'll go ahead and get this shroud out of the way as well. So what we've got obviously is a single CPU system in the uh, relatively short board in the Supermicro X11 family. Um, Looking at the front, we've got our 12 hard drives here with a uh, pretty sizable backplane with its connection back to the motherboard. We've got our two SSDs over here, each with an individual connection back to the motherboard. Three relatively large fans. These are uh, pretty beefy, actually. So those guys will crank through uh, quite a bit of uh, 
air sucking those across and through the core components in the back. We've got six dims that are 16 gig each, it looks like. So we've got, uh, what is that, 96 uh, gigs of RAM. Of course, our 10G connector that, uh, or card that we saw from the other side. And we've got a little uh, WD Black SN750, as I read it upside down, uh, 500 gig for boot drive. And this board also has an onboard Broadcom HBA. So we've got all of our core components. We've got uh, software installed on here already. The iX Systems crew has already installed the, um, the base FreeNAS code in addition to the Asegra plugin, so that's already there. What we've got to do is put this back together and get it into the rack and get going. Uh, initially, we're going to start with the Asegra. We're excited about the agentless operations it offers, and of course it has things like dedupe and compression and, and many other features that we're going to explore. We're going to do a, a video on how that all works, do some content around that and then uh, dive into performance characteristics of FreeNAS, uh, soon to be TrueNAS Core, and, and really get a better understanding of all the capabilities uh, available to us in this box. So we're really excited about it, looking forward to it, and hope you are too. We'll be back soon with more content out of this box, iX Systems, and Asegra.